I ran into his dad uh, in a golf course parking lot a couple of years ago with my son, and his dad and I actually got into a fist fight, and his dad beat the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in Hockey Central at home. Hope you're having a great day. It's David Amber here and every week we try and bring you all the newsmakers and uh, newsworthy stories from around the National Hockey League and all the top players and GMs, coaches and analysts. And today we're very pleased to welcome in from the Montreal Canadiens forward Brendan Gallagher who joins us from Vancouver. And Kevin BX, uh, of course, uh, former Vancouver Canuck and does uh, how many years in the in the NHL, what, 13, 14? Million, years? million. <laughs> a million years, and now, of course, a broadcaster over at Sportsnet's uh, NHL coverage and Hockey Night in Canada. Great to have you guys along. And maybe one of the common threads to have you to is, is the city of Vancouver, where Brendan is, where you uh, played for many, many years, Kevin. And, and Brendan, let's start there. What are you doing? How are you spending your days right now in Vancouver? <sighs> well, not a whole lot going on here. Uh, I get up every morning, join my old man for a workout. Uh, he likes to get up early, so we're there. Get the work in, which is nice. I'm obviously lucky to have him around. Uh, so that part of it's taken care of. But then after that, it gets pretty boring. Uh, nothing's really open. live on a golf course, so I just kind of look at that every day and imagine the times when we were out there. And um, other than that, it's, it's kind of wait till dinner and pass by the time. So that's funny. And you mentioned your dad, Ian, uh, strength and conditioning coach with the Vancouver Giants all those years when, when Kevin was playing for the Canucks, right? So how much did you know about Kevin BX of the hockey player when you were – out uh, as a youngster before you made it to the NHL? Uh, I knew quite a bit about him because our family, uh, we came from Edmonton, and when we moved to Vancouver, all we heard about was the Canucks. So we developed this hatred for him. And <laughs> obviously, uh, Kevin being one of their better players, we had to hear about him a lot. So I, I wasn't a big fan, uh, if I'm being honest, but he was, uh, at that time, the Canucks pretty much beat the Oilers every single time they played. So I had, to, I had to hear about it from all my buddies, you know, pretty much growing up. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, when when he first came to the NHL, we we certainly had our battles in front of the net uh, in Montreal. Like he, obviously, his game is in front of the net, and he's good along the, the walls. And we we had a lot of confrontations, but I never really knew he was from Vancouver until later on. But we were just talking before we. I ran into his dad uh, in a golf course parking lot a couple of years ago with my son, and his dad and I actually got into a fist fight. And his dad beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, but my dad yeah, was scared. We, part, part of that story is true. Only part of it. <laughs> yeah, my dad was scared. He said, I pissed you off so much. And you could tell you wanted to hit me so bad on the ice. He said, so you, take you, know on him. You, you know what's funny about that story is my son, my son's almost 13 now. And he's obviously a huge hockey fan. Grew up around the game. Grew up that kid in the dressing rooms, on the ice with the guys. And when we, I remember when we ran into your dad after he said, I can't believe that was Brendan Gallagher's dad. And he's kind of like bragging when we went to meet my dad after at the course and he's bragging to my dad, like that was Brendan Gallagher's dad. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like you've grown up with all these NHL guys, but like, like the Sedins, Luongo, all these guys, but to him, like that didn't really, those are just dad's friends. Like that's not a real <laughs> NHL guy. A real NHL guy is Brendan Gallagher. So he, I just yeah, remember being so excited he ran into to Galley's dad. Oh, it's, it's nice to hear, but I think those other names, I'd be more excited meeting those other guys. That, that's very cool. But, but take us back to these confrontations on the ice, because you guys are both championship turfers out there. Did you guys have any verbal jousting out there uh, when you, you met each other on the ice? Uh, I mean, I, I took a lot of it. I took the beat. <laughs> My job was to go there and stand there. Uh, I mean, I – I talk a little bit, but most of it is just kind of, um, you know, putting up with a lot of a lot of stuff there. And obviously, you know, you know the way he played. He played incredibly hard. He defended the front of his net. And uh, if I'm not going there, I was probably going to be out of the league pretty soon. So I just basically had to put up with a beating and uh, I was kind of happy when he left the league. I don't remember anything specific either. I, I, I just remember the game was a little bit different. They let a little bit more go in front of the net, uh, especially earlier in your career. And I, I was able to uh, – a lot of cross-checks to the back. And, I mean, I think I – I know people won't believe this, but I wasn't a clean player. So, I would uh, I would try to if, – if I saw a little bit of skin or, like, somewhere there wasn't padding, I would try to cross-check you there. I'd try to slew foot you. I, I was dirty. And this guy's scoring all the goals in front of the net and then landing on our goalie. Like, for me, it was very, very aggravating because he's there and I'm giving him everything I got. He's not leaving. And then he'll score a goal. So, I'm like, great. You're no, just, actually 
you're the reason I wear uh, – so I wear a full, like, kidney protector around my back. After one of Good. the games we played, you guys, <laughs> I was so sore the next day. And Brian Gianta <laughs> came up to me. He's like, man, like, what? I can't even walk. Like, what's going on? He showed me his, and he had this little pad. So our trainers made me this little kidney protector, and since then, it's – but you're the reason after the game I was, uh, I was feeling it. Oh, that, that is so funny. That sounds Listen, about you guys, right. <laughs> you guys have a lot in common, though, not just the, not just the geography of the Vancouver area, but uh, you both had some time on your hands because of the pandemic and the, and the lockdown, and you both become social media stars in your own right. Brendan, I have to say, I'm pretty surprised at you following you, the, the, the Brooklyn Nine-Nine TikToks and everything else. And then, Kevin, you and your daughter, Reese, I mean, this is fun stuff we're seeing out there. You're putting the rest of us dads to shame doing all the TikTok dances. So have you guys had a chance to enjoy each other's social media accounts and sort of watch other uh, NHL players as well? And they're coming out and showing their personality, surprising some? I mean, I've seen his uh, tremendous amount of courage actually dancing. That's the one thing I'll never <laughs> find myself doing. Uh, but I think I think you have your daughter there to make you look good. Other than that, it's uh, you won't be it's ugly. dancing. It's ugly, eh? <laughs> it's, I, it's it's way better than I would do. So I, I think uh, your skits so your skits are good. Like you actually yeah. execute it, and you and you put in like a lot of effort, and it's it's they're unbelievable to do that. Mine more or less are just like I think they're self-deprecating, but anyone who has a daughter, when I make these, like we made one last night outside. Um, and to hear my daughter laugh at me, like the, her laugh is one of her favorite things. And she's just howling at me because she thinks she teaches me all these dances. She's like, okay, dad, you got it. You got it. And then he hits the button and we start the dance and I butcher the whole thing. It takes me like an hour to do the simplest dance. And she's howling. And, and that's the reason I do it. It just makes yeah. her so happy. And they're cool. funny. They're passive. They the are time, funny. Right? They are funny. It kills the time right now. I think, I think when uh, the quarantine ends, I'll probably be retiring some TikTok. But for the time <laughs> being, it's... It's helped me get through this thing. But they're Don't it's addicting. How much, how much time do you spend looking at other – once you get going at TikToks, you, like, you burn out 50% of your battery just watching TikToks. Yeah. Hours. You just spend yeah. hours, hours flipping through these things. It's, it's actually <laughs> sick. Enough, but it's yeah. it, it is so good. The, the Brooklyn Nine-Nine uh, t- takeoff you did, which happens to be my kids, their favorite show, and they've shown me that independently, the actual one with, with uh, Andy Samberg. It's, it's great, and you're – Recreation of it is perfect. You must have got a lot of feedback about that, Brandon. Number one, could you please sing the opening to I Want It That Way? Really? Okay. You are my fire. Number two, keep it going. The one desire. Number three, believe when i say number four i want it that way tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache tell me why ain't nothing but a mistake now number five i never want to hear you say Woo! i want it, it that way. way oh chills literal chills it was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that part. Well, me and uh, me and Lekkanen, we watch this show uh, religiously. We we love the show, and we've probably done that in the car a hundred times. So that that was easy. It was kind of natural. I pretty much did it just to to get a laugh out of him. And then you know, like you're saying, when you get on this thing, it's just so addicting. <laughs> I couldn't help but make more and uh, spend more time on the damn thing. But it was uh, that one was I've. I've said that in the locker room a few too many times. <laughs> hey, well, listen, when I watched it, chills, li- literal chills. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like when's when's nice. yours coming out, David? Uh, yeah. My daughter wants me to get into a TikTok thing with her. I'm not as brave as you, Cav. You know, I, well, do, I, I, uh, I, I you, gotta worry about my you career. Got the nice, you got the nice upper body there. Why don't you do one of the push up challenges with your shirt off? I'm sure, the viewers <laughs> like to say that. I hey, think speaking of that, well, wait a minute. We got we got Juice, who's who prides himself of being this this big ripped guy, and then we got Brennan. I, you know, I've seen the quads on you. How much do you guys squat? What's the max we've seen you guys put up on? The <laughs> what do you squat? What do you squat, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I oh, wow. uh, I'm, I couldn't even tell you. It's way it's way more at the end of the summer than it is at the start, and then you kind of lose it throughout the season. But um, you know, that's you're just getting your body ready to take a beating. So, Kev, you were going to add something? 
Well, I was just going to say, I, I don't know exactly, but I squat more than anybody else in that CBC building there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Berkey and Elliot Friedman for sure. You would be my biggest competition, but I'm pretty sure I got Kelly Rudy and all those other – Christopher Steve, I've seen those chicken legs. <laughs> what, what about Army? Oh, Army, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cole might, Cole's might have something to say. Listen, when, when we can get back to a gym, you and I, next time you're in Toronto, we're going to get into a gym. We'll settle this. Let's do it. I'm a little nervous, though. <laughs> so speaking of being in physical shape, uh, you know, Brendan, there is a little bit of news this week, and, and the commissioner had a, a great in-depth interview with uh, Ron McLean and discussed the possibility of a model they would use, centralized locations, bringing a number of teams to these centralized locations. I wanted to get your guys' ideas, uh, your thoughts on this. And, and Kevin, you were a player rep. Uh, for many years in the National Hockey League. And, and Brendan, you're a co-rep alongside Paul Byron uh, with the Canadians. So you guys are going to have a bit of say as far as, or at least Brendan now, currently you'd have a bit of say with your team about how you would move forward. What are some of the issues the players want to get resolved to, to maybe help uh, with re, uh, resuming this league that's on pause right now? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so much being talked about. Um, first and foremost is is just health. Um, you know, if we do go back, you got to guarantee that uh, you know players are going to be healthy, families aren't going to be affected. But then after that, I mean, the the ideal. I mean, if we could use this to negotiate the next CBA and kind of, you know, obviously burn you know a couple couple bridges here and and not have to worry about that down the road. That's the ideal plan. So. You know, there's there's a lot of things. Obviously, Gary's pretty motivated to to get these games in. To me, I think they're probably going to have to get creative um, with the uh, with the format. But I think there is a way that you can you can award the Stanley Cup, which is ideally what everyone wants, and you don't want to take that away from the players. But I think, you know, with what you're going through, you're going to have to get uh, pretty creative, and it won't be uh, it won't be the format that we're really used to seeing. Kevin, what are your thoughts? I, you know, as someone who spent many years in the league and, and was part of those people who was having discussions uh, with the league as far as helping the players and, and the league come to similar paths. Well, I think there's two different motivations. I think if uh, most of the players I've talked to are sitting at home or at their cottages or wherever, and they just want to play hockey again. I think uh, regardless of it being a shortened season, everybody wants to still participate in some sort of a playoff format and award a Stanley Cup champion. So the players are sitting at home and they're thinking, we just want to play. As long as it's safe, it's safe for our families, it's safe for us, we want to get this thing going. And then if you're looking at from the league standpoint, well, they're losing lots of money right now. That's no secret. So they want to just salvage the season financially some sort of way. So getting these on-site games is a way to get some sort of TV revenue some money back into their pocket, which ultimately is going to be money back in the player's pocket as well, because they're going to take a hit from this as well. So I, it's just such an unprecedented time, and you're almost at the mercy of, of policy right now. And are they going to be allowed to have a gathering at an arena with, you know, like it's going to take, what, 60 people at least to, to, to put this production together? You know, that's exceeding the limits right now. So if those limits change, maybe. It's just such a weird time. And, and I've heard people say, oh, I'm – I'm optimistic that there'll be hockey in, in the summer, but nobody really knows. We don't know what's happening week to week. Things change week to week. And if you've had the privilege of listening to some of Trump's interviews, which I do because I live down here, I mean, <laughs> they change daily with this guy. So, like, one day he's like, wants to open up everything. The next day he's like, he's getting mad at Georgia for doing so. It's, it's just a big dog's breakfast down here. It's a fluid situation. And, and Brendan, if you could speak, you, you said they're going to have to get creative and they're, they're looking at every model. I think that's one thing the NHL is willing to be very creative about what's going to happen. As a member of the Montreal Canadiens, you could talk to a few of your teammates to get a sense of, you know, what they would ideally like to see happen as far as a format that would be uh, keep the integrity and not compromise any player's safety and get everyone back there to resume this season. Yeah, I mean, for us as a team, um, you know, we were in a position with 11 games to go where I think the odds of us making the playoffs, you know, it, it realistically wasn't going to happen. Uh, there's scenarios where, you know, maybe they go to a 24 team playoff and, you know, then all of a sudden you're in, which is great. Uh, but from our standpoint, we're looking at it where if it's a situation where we got to go back to Montreal, you got to quarantine for two weeks, then you got to go through a, a three week training camp just to play the 11 games you kind of look at it as how that's going to affect your next year and how it affects your summer training and, and everything in that way. So with us, it's, it's almost detrimental to, to send the teams that are eliminated back uh, because it kind of hurts them going forward. But at the same time, 
you know, the ultimate goal is awarding the Stanley Cup. So you have to, you kind of have to find a way to, to make sure at least that happens. And if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. But hopefully there's a, a situation where, where they can kind of, you know, make it, make it so, you know, there's competitive hockey being played, but at the same time, it's not going to affect the 82 game season schedule going forward. Yeah, if health wasn't an issue, though, if, if health's not an issue, and you know, one, you can provide this great service, provide this great escape for this insatiable appetite for sport that we're missing right now globally, uh, and at the same time, help the finances of the league, which in turn helps the finances of the players, there must be something in it to do this. There, there must be that motivation, and also to award the Stanley Cup. 85% of the regular season was played, so it would be nice to see it through to its finality, no? Well, you know what I'm worried about is – sorry, Brent. I'm worried about what kind of shape some of these players are in right now. Like, I, you, you know, some guys – I know some guys in the Ducks, they went back to Sweden. So – and some guys didn't bring their equipment wherever they went. So they've been sitting around. I know I talked to Ben Sherrod, one of uh, Galley's teammates. He's like 260 right now. The guy, the guy's uh, a little bit of a lie, but you know what I mean? The like guys are like, talk about a, a three week training camp, but yeah. like they're, it's not like they're doing a three week training camp coming out of the summer where they're in their best shape of their lives. They're coming from, they're coming out, they're going to do a three week training camp coming off of watching every Netflix show possible. Right. So yeah, and, it, it's a very tough situation you guys are in. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty lucky here. Uh, so I have my dad and in, in BC, you know, the, there's not a, we get 20 to 40 cases a day. So the restrictions, you know, I can still go to the track. I can still do all these things. There's places where they're blowing up and you know, you, you really can't go outside. So there's yeah. no way, there's no way these guys can do anything. And the longer this goes, the more out of shape you get. So it's, uh, it'll be interesting. And, and as soon as you start going past uh, July 1st, when, you know, players are expecting to be free agents and sign contracts and then bring mm -hmm. injuries into play, how that's going to affect, guys signing contracts going forward this is just all the stuff that the the pa is really trying to deal with and you don't want anyone to um you know to play this late maybe they're up for a big contract they get hurt and then you know it affects them so much going forward a, a lot of logistics to be figured out that is for sure and i uh, just wanted to get your sense of things brendan because i know you'd had a, a news conference where some of this was discussed so you always want to get clarity on that and of course we all hope under the right conditions we can resume this season would be great for the fans great for the players great for the owners as well let's leave it with this a little bit lighter you guys mentioned netflix before that's been everyone's obsession because you got to kill some time while we're in this pause uh really quickly give us your one recommendation uh, that you've been watching over the last what six seven weeks while we've been in this pod. Start with you, Kevin. What are you, what are you telling the public they should be keeping an eye on? Uh, I think everybody's watching the same things right now. I think everyone's pretty much watched Ozarks, uh, the Tiger King. I just watched it just to be up to date on it. It was terrible, but I, I watched it. Uh, <laughs> Carol did it, dog. right? Carol Baskin. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, think, I think she did it. Uh, she's she's a scary woman. But my daughter's recreated those TikToks too. The Carol Baskin. She doesn't even know what's going on, but she's doing the Carol Baskin TikToks. But I'm I'm a big documentary guy, so I've watched a few documentaries. Uh, a lot of World War II in Vietnam uh, on HD, like those kind of shows. I like the history documentaries. That's good. That's good. And, and Brendan, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I was. I rewatch shows. My only recommendation is don't watch Tiger King. It is, yeah. uh, it, it's the same thing. I watched it so quickly. It was addicting, but man, was it a terrible show. And it just, you don't want to know that there's humans like that out there. So, uh, yeah, I watched it, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. All right. Well, I'll let McMillions. I, I watched as well. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. A six part okay. documentary on the whole McDonald's monopoly scandal. So if you, you have a few hours to kill, and of course I'm digging into the last dance, the whole uh, bulls run from. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's the best show out there right now. How, yeah. I that's... just wish it was Sunday every day. Yeah. I know. Well, episode three, Dennis Rodman, who's not watching that. <laughs> that's that's going to be entertaining. Is it all Dennis? Dennis it's, is episode uh, I, three? Yeah, pretty. That's what I saw last night. So that's uh, you're lucky. We only get it Monday on Netflix here in Canada, so we gotta wait the extra day. Uh, but but yeah, well, yeah. we have it tuned in Sunday. I actually, uh, Dennis lives like two miles away from me, and I I, I was on a plane with him <laughs> this year, and uh, I don't know if I should tell this. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a credit card, eh? He has no credit, so he, he couldn't take an Uber back from the airport. So he was like waiting to call a taxi cab and I offered him to like jump in our Uber with my wife and I. And he's like, no, I'm good, bro. <laughs> take a cab. 
<laughs> this guy's a pretty special guy. Like he's, as you can see, uh, like I can't imagine what this episode on him is going to be like. Be uh, it'll be, it'll be incredible. Well, guys, listen, we appreciate it so much. Hockey Central at home, uh, bringing some fun, bringing some levity at a time when we all can use that. Brendan, we, we obviously look back, look forward to having you back on the ice. And Kev, I look forward to face to face with you, you know, doing the shows again together for hockey night. Uh, it was always a lot of fun. So thank you guys both so much. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.